This video is all about the mistakes that separate beginners from pro photographers. So I'm gonna tell you what those mistakes are and how to avoid them. The first thing that separates the beginners from the pros is beginner photos aren't very sharp. So let me tell you how to make sure that your photos are as sharp as they could possibly be. So the first thing you can do is make sure that if you're gonna shoot at a lower shutter speed, you need to lock your camera off on a tripod because if you're holding it handheld and you're shooting at a low shutter speed to make sure you get light onto the sensor, you're gonna introduce motion blur and that's going to produce a more soft image. And if that's not a stylistic choice, you're definitely gonna have a soft looking photo. One thing that doesn't really get talked about is how aperture affects the sharpness of your photo. So if you were taking like a landscape shot and you wanted everything in the background to be in focus, now one would think that if you just raise your aperture as high to like F11 or F16, it's going to have, it's gonna be the sharpest looking image possible. Everything will be in focus, but it's not gonna be as sharp as it possibly could be because every single lens has its own sweet spot and it just varies lens to lens. Just keep in mind that if you're shooting at f1.2 or f1.4, that area of focus is gonna be very thin. So just make sure that your autofocus is focusing on the area that you want, or just raise your aperture up a little bit to make sure that you get everything else in focus and everything's nice and sharp. Speaking of focus though, if you're using autofocus, I like to use eye autofocus because I do a lot of portrait photography, but just make sure that your focus is on what you're actually trying to focus on. If you're using manual focus, you might wanna use something like focus peaking or actually zoom in on the image and make sure that the area that you're trying to focus on is actually in focus. And the last thing I'll say that affects the overall sharpness is probably the lens choice. If you're using a cheap kit lens that probably came with your camera, it's definitely not gonna be as sharp as something like a G Master or one of the more higher end lenses because you're, you're getting what you pay for. You're, you're paying for more expensive glass. It's going to yield much sharper results. In my experience, when I use prime lenses, I've had the sharpest images than I do with like zoom lenses. And I'm not saying that you need to go out and buy the most expensive glass out there. Because if you're not choosing the right shutter speed or the aperture or focusing properly in your camera, it doesn't matter how expensive the glass is because you're still gonna get photos that aren't sharp. The next mistake beginners make is not exposing their photos properly. They're either too dark or they're too bright. And there's ways of being able to ensure that your photos are exposed properly. That way, whenever it comes to editing your photos, it's like a hundred times easier. The first tool that I like to use is a histogram. And if you have no idea how to use a histogram, all you have to do to get started is just on the right side of it, the histogram is gonna be representing your highlights. And then on the left side, it's gonna be your shadows. And so basically what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that it doesn't get too far to the right because that means that you're clipping your highlights and basically there's gonna be no detail to be able to bring back whenever it comes to editing your photos. And then you don't want it to be too far to the left because you don't want that to, you don't wanna be losing details in the shadows. Now another tool that I like to use is probably the main tool that I use is zebras. And that's because I do a lot of portrait photography and really what it does is you can set it and it can identify hot spots or areas that are gonna be over or underexposed. And I can see those areas and adjust my aperture and shutter speed as I need to, or ISO if I need to. But I like to use zebras because it's really easy. It just shows up right on the screen and I can make those quick adjustments instead of having to look down at the histogram and figure everything out. There's a lot of other tools out there depending on the camera that you have, but I always recommend using some sort of a tool to make sure that you have your exposure dialed in. If you have really sharp images and they're properly exposed, but you have poor composition, your photos are still gonna be terrible. So let me tell you how to nail your composition every single time. The first thing that will immediately improve your composition is using the rule of thirds. So basically you're just gonna break up the frame into thirds, and then you're gonna wanna put points of interest on one of the two vertical lines. And what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna be like on this side of the frame, and I'm gonna look here, but, and you don't, you wanna give them enough space so that's like breathing room. So this looks a little bit more natural. It will look weird if I turn this way and I was looking this direction, you took a photo. And unless it was a stylistic choice, but I definitely would just make sure if I was on this side right here, I would wanna be looking this direction versus looking this way. And so just, just keep that in mind. If you're doing landscape photography, the two horizontal lines can be used for your horizon line. If you wanna showcase more of the sky or more of the actual area that you're taking a photograph of, you would just put it on one of those thirds. Another thing that will improve your composition is 
creating depth in your shots. And this can be done a bunch of different ways. One way that you can do it that's really easy is find some foreground to have in your shot. Because what's gonna happen is it's gonna blur out that foreground and it's going to naturally create some depth. If you don't have any foreground, one thing that you can also do is just create a little bit of distance between your subject and the background and it's going to give you more bokeh in the background. That way you're gonna naturally have some more depth. You can also do it by like having a, like backlit, so separating your subject from the background that way with, with some sort of light source. Like at golden hour, I like to do this often, they'll get like a, a rim light around their hair and it's just makes for a really appealing image. You also want to make sure that you're filling the frame with a clearly defined subject. I should be able to look at a photograph and know exactly what I'm supposed to be looking at. There should be some sort of a focal point. So fill the frame and try to eliminate or exclude all the other things from the background. The way I look at it is every photo is tells some sort of a story. And I like to think of my photos that way because that helps me uh, understand what I need to have in the photo and also what I need to be on the lookout for when it comes to excluding things from the background. And so what I'll do is I'll work around that to make sure that I can capture the thing and tell the story the way that I want to tell it. You can also use leading lines to help you establish that focal point or utilizing some sort of symmetry in your shots, which those are all really cool ways of doing it. You can go like I can make a whole entire video on composition, but those are just some quick tips that will immediately improve your photos. Now that you know these mistakes, I'm confident that you're gonna be taking much better photos and you're gonna be ready to start developing your photography style. So check out this video next, because I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do that. I'll see you there. Peace.